Hello everyone, this is Terrence of the TSKJesusFree.com and in this particular video, I'm going to talk about um, the seven promises of a promise keepers. Um, so, this is kind of one of those things that, um, yeah, so this is, this is kind of my guiding principles or whatever as a Christian. Um, am I perfect in this? No. No one's perfect, but that's what I'm striving to do, so. As I drink um, uh, room temperature coffee. <laughs> so, um, anyways, so what is like, what, so what is Promise Keepers? So, Promise Keepers is a um, organization that um, seeks out for, seeks to get men to live a godly lifestyle. That's all it is. That, that what, what it boils down to. Is Promise Keepers' mission, basic down to earth mission, uh, basic mission is to get Christian men to fully commit to Christ and Christ alone. Okay, and so that's why I like the organization. Um, I've been uh, um, like two or three. I don't know how many uh, Promise Keepers events I have been, um, and it's like deeply rooted in my family, so to speak. And so, um, yeah, um, so the first promise, promise one is, uh, they call it honor, a promise, uh, this is coming from the website, so, um, so I'll have the link below on the thing when I, uh, post it. Um, so a promise keeper is committed to honoring Jesus Christ through worship, prayer, and obedience to God's word in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is based off of Romans 12, 1 through 2. And so, yeah, it's just um, this kind of, just kind of a summary of of what it means to really, um, this kind of first promise. Um, that kind of lays the uh, groundwork for, for and this is, a, this is the type of promise that is very applicable to anybody. To not just, um, not just Christian men, but Christian women too. Uh, so, but, but. Promise Keepers is specifically a ministry dedicated to get men into the Word of God and get men engaged in their local community in, in terms of the church. So, um, Promise 2 is the Brotherhood. So, the Brotherhood, um, a Promise Keeper is committed to pursuing vital relationships with other, with a few other men, understanding that he needs brothers to help him keep his promises okay so in this aspect is just basic account accountability um being accountable to other brothers in christ and so and that's based off of ecclesiastes 4 12 um so and then uh promise three is virtue a promise keeper is committed to practicing spiritual moral ethical and sexual purity um, so, and this is based off of Hebrews 15 through 16. And so, um, and actually, wait, actually, and then Micah 6, 6 through 8, and then Romans 16, 19, I believe I, I think I, there's more, oh yeah, there's more scriptures for each one of them, but there's the link below. So, um, so virtue, yep, means that. Uh, is committed to practicing spiritual, moral, ethical, and sexual purity. It kind of goes. Um, promise three is kind of uh, um, is kind of a um, a um, offshoot of promise one. Um, so there's it's not really specific, but it's like um, promise one and promise two. Promise three is is similar in a way, but promise one is more general, and then promise three. It's a little bit more specific, but still kind of, um, kind of a uh, wide range, so to speak. And so, and then uh, commitment, promise four. Um, a promise keeper is committed is committed to building strong marriages and families through love, protection, and biblical values. And so, yeah, uh, commitment means that yeah, just being committed uh, um, in. In terms of uh, one's own family and whatnot, and so, 
And this is based off of Ephesians 5.25, and then Ephesians 6.4, and then Mark 10, 6 through 9. I don't know. It says 6 through 9, and they have a 6. I don't know what that means. It might be a typo, but whatever. It, um, yeah, so 6 through 9. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know why they have the 6 there. Uh, so yeah, that's the commitment. And so, and, and I think the commitment refers to more about the marriage, um, in general, but, uh, because there's, uh, the, there's these two people, one is a guy, one is a gal. Um, so, um, and then, uh, promise five is a, uh, is generosity. So, a promise giver is committed to supporting the mission of his church by honoring and praying for his pastor and by actively giving his time and resources. Like, the actively giving his time and resources. And so, um, yeah. Um, so that means that, um, that that person, that the promise keeper, um, is kind of, um, it, his goal is to basically... Uh, support the mission of his church um, by honoring and praying for his pastor or pastors um, in a lot of cases, in a lot of churches, um, and by actively giving his time and resources, both time and resources. So it's not just like all one or all the other. Because some cases, there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, we'll give you my resources, but not much time. and Or vice versa. I mean... More than likely, if a person's given there a lot of time and then they're not given a lot of resources, that just means they're, um, uh, and they're, they're, they're in their, they're not in their prime earning years of their life yet. So, um, but usually, um, and then sometimes you don't have not much time. So, and later in life, you might end up giving more resources, but less time. So it, um, but as, as long as you're, um, as long as you're um, supporting the church of well, of your local church, and so and being engaged in that, and being generous for, with your time and uh, resources, and then promise six, um, a promise <clears throat> a promise keeper is committed to reaching beyond any racial and denominational barriers to de 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 to demonstrate the power of biblical unity. And so the this is the only one that I would I don't ha I don't have any problems with the uh racial but the demogra uh denominational it really depends on what the denomination is. Um so yeah, sure um like yeah, in, in terms of various organizations that have a more of a common cause, so, so um, like um, like if there's an or like the feed my starving children is a good example of uh, of that where you get different denominational people working together um, for um, uh, that common cause. I mean, I guess that's one thing. Um, and then the, uh, of course, uh, the racial, uh, thing, um, obviously, um, and the one thing that I have to do point out with the racial, um, yeah, the only difference between a black person and a white person and an Asian person and, like, the genetic differences between the races, so to speak, um, is like, um, is like less than 1%, uh, difference in terms of, like, the, uh, the skin color, uh, uh, what makes... It basically is just whoever has more pigments or whatever or something like that. I haven't looked into it in a while, but um, well, I think that's that's um, the. It depends on how much pigments you have or whatnot. So I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't remember the actual like the more pigments you have, the lighter or darker you are. Or, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> so um, I don't remember that specific fact, but it has to do with the uh, pigmentation. So. And um, to me, that's just a non-issue. I don't really care. I mean, I care, um, but in the terms of like, is that gonna really affect my viewpoint of that particular person? No, it won't. Um, I'm very individualistic, so 
um, that person is going to live or die by what he or she says. So, <laughs> or, 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 or what, like the conversation I have with the, with a particular person. Um, so, and then, uh, promise seven is, um, a promise giver is committed to influencing his ward, being obedient to the great commission and the great, com uh, the, the great commandment and the great commission. So, uh, yeah, just being a, uh, basically being, uh, obedient to that, those, those two specific um um commandments of like of the great commandment uh, meaning love your god love 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 the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength and then of course the great commission um uh just sharing uh other people and being able uh um bringing uh christ into into conversations and whatnot so if it if it warrants it um I know it's a little tricky to do that, um, but uh, at times, so you get people that are more re relational, and there, there's people who are more confrontational, so, or more like, we gotta do street preaching, and then we gotta do, uh, like, so like, so like, there's different people doing different things in terms of the, uh, in, in terms of the Great Commission, um, so there's gonna be some people who are, who are who are good at street preaching. So when I mean street preaching, I mean the one that is like uh, Todd Friel's type of style of street preaching and slash um, the the uh, the uh, the street preaching of uh, what's his name from Living Waters. Um, oh, I gotta look it up. Uh, Living Waters. Oh, I think it's Ray Comfort. I think it's Drake Comfort's the one. It's loading up. Mm. Uh, yep, Ray Comfort. Yep, yep. Yeah, Ray Comfort, yeah. So, uh, that's kind of the gist of the uh, seven promises. Uh, am I perfect? No. Are, are all the... Con are, do all the uh, men who sign on off this or agree to this or or somehow uh try to live by these seven promises are they perfect in it no they're not perfect in it we're not perfect in it none of us are but these are just the kind of the seven promises that uh we as men who took this uh promise try to live by so yeah that's kind of my uh thoughts and um so to me it's a good organization um now they did try back in like i don't know 10, 15 years ago or whatever, they tried adding women to it and it just failed horribly. Like, it just failed horribly. And this is why um, it's always, there's, um, the reason why I like Promise Keepers is because there's not that many men organizations out there. Like, there's, there's all these, like, women stuff all around churches and such. But there's a, there, at least back in the 90s and Really, the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, um, it's not so much anymore. There's enough material out there, finally. But um, one of the biggest uh, uh, one of the biggest things that happened in the 90s or 80s, 90s, and uh, 2000s is that there's a, there was a lack of men's ministries out there. So it has significantly gotten better. Um, but um, the problem... There are just so many problems within the church right now. And so that's why I'm kind of vocal at particular movements that are kind of creeping into the church right now. Um, there, I don't think, I don't think uh, some of the movements are, are, are at that level. But if I can like kind of put a stop to it um, or help put a stop to it sooner than it gets bigger. Um, so... And really, um, some of my previous videos, uh, it's the uh, commitment one. Uh, so, building strong marriages and, and families through love, protection, and biblical values. Am I married? No. Um, but that's up to Jesus to decide on that one. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's kind of the uh, seven per uh, promises of a promise keepers. So... Yeah, uh, I do like that organization. Um, so it's a decent organization. It's more of a, it, it's more of an organization that like 
it, yeah, of course, you're going to get, like, all sorts of, um, um, Christians coming together. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to get the real hardcore, um, extremes of, you're going to get, like, you might get, like, a lot of people within, I don't know, like, they're basic evangelical basic um but i don't know how far do they go in terms of the unity part uh they, I, I don't know what they mean like denomination do they mean like catholics and and one another because that's a gray area right there that is a big gray area and i'm not going to get into that topic because that's a whole different uh different video and and so yeah um that's all i'm going to say about this and have a good one Bye.